I woke up around 1.45 with a start because I had a really strange sensation in my left ear. Um, I remember feeling something by my ear, my right ear, so I just sort of swatted at it. Like the feeling of like fluttering deep in my ear was awful. And I grabbed a Q-tip to see if there was, you know, water or something. And when I gently swabbed, I felt movement. And when I looked at the Q-tip, there was something black on it. And I knew. The head of the department took a look in my ear. And she's like, oh yeah, there's, there's a bug in there. Uh, she's like, don't worry, this happens all the time. They're like, oh, do you have a bug in your ear? And I'm like, how would you know that? And they're like, this happens often. I'm like, what? As a health editor, I hear and read about these stories all the time. The idea of a bug crawling into your ear is horrifying, and I'm clearly not alone in thinking this. There are actually ancient Anglo-Saxon legends about earwigs which seek out your ears so that they can burrow into your brain. There are even urban legends about ants getting into your brain through the ear canal. For the record, unless there's some greater injury to your skull, a bug isn't gonna get in there. Still, it's terrifying and it keeps me up at night, and pop culture hasn't exactly helped lessen my fear. Once in the year, it's a thousand to one chance of it ever coming out the same way again. You see, their young enter through the ears and wrap themselves around the cerebral cortex. Even though the dangers of insects burrowing into people's ears is greatly overblown, this still happens. There have been reports of spiders, moths, flies, centipedes, maggots, and especially cockroaches. I have found a variety of different insects in patients' ears over time. I've found bed bugs, I found a ladybug just last week. Cockroaches are often involved. The vast majority have been dead and have been there for some time. I've had a few occasions where they've been alive. It's usually very memorable because when you look inside the ear canal, it's really funny to see an insect staring back at you in the microscope. We have a collection of arthropods, including ticks, insects, and spiders, that are reported in the literature to have been found in the ears of people. What would motivate them to want to get into your ear? They're not actively looking to get into a human ear. Some of them, like the tick and the bed bug, are looking actually to feed on our blood. So we would expect them to be on our bodies. Mm -hmm. For ticks, they are looking for areas where the skin is a little bit thinner, so okay. it could be one reason that they're found in ears. In general, a lot of the time that an organism would crawl into an ear is because they're looking for a dark, protected place. A lot of these organisms are active at night. They're cryptic, so they like to hide. And several of them are attracted to lights at night, like the scarab beetle. If you're on your mobile device at night in bed, uh, they could be attracted oh to gosh. that light and just land somewhere nearby Ugh. and then crawl around from there. And which one would be the most common to end up in an ear? So cockroaches are probably the most common ones that end up in people's ears. There is one memorable case where there was a live cockroach that I saw when I was working in an emergency department. It was a small cockroach that was easily seen once I used an otoscope to visualize the inside of the patient's ear canal. Thankfully, it actually climbed out of her ear canal into the otoscope. In a measure of true justice, I shook it out on the floor and the patient stepped on it. German cockroaches are considered to be the most common cockroach pest in the world, and they are only found in human homes. They're not, they're not found outdoors, they're not found anywhere where humans and our garbage are not. There is some evidence that earwax could be attractive to cockroaches because that wax emits sort of a fatty acid smell that's similar to what might emerge from meats or other things. This is the American cockroach and it is the largest cockroach that we're gonna find indoors um, in the United States. But how can this guy fit into somebody's ear? So we have here a, a representation of an ear, um, an actual life-size ear canal, mm -hmm. and there's been some new research showing that they can almost be flattened and still survive. They hide in really tight cracks and crevices, and there's actually a behavioral response that they have because they like compression on multiple sides. They and like that's, to be swaddled. They like to cuddled. be swaddled, <laughs> yes. Um, and that behavior is called thigmotaxis, where they're actually attracted to those places the evolutionary reason for that is that provides protection for them. Mm -hmm. So they're frightening to us, um, but as an insect, they are just a delicious morsel of goo to other <laughs> predators. They don't have any real defenses except they're mm -hmm. fast and they can fit into tight spaces. And so that's, that's one of the ear. reasons they might like your ear. If someone suspects they have an insect in their ear, they may use mineral oil drops to drown the insect 
before going to the emergency department. In an emergency room, the physician can usually make the diagnosis and can remove at least part of the insect. Very often though, especially if it's lodged deeply in the ear canal, there may be incomplete removal of the insect or some parts of it. In those cases, referral to an ear, nose, and throat specialist is important. After an insect is removed from the ear canal, there's typically very little long-term problem with the skin of the ear canal or the eardrum. The inflammation is usually very superficial, so once the ear is clear of the insect, the long-term danger from having this foreign body in the ear canal is really quite low. There have been a number of studies that have looked at how often certain hospitals have dealt with foreign body obstruction. A foreign body obstruction could be anything from a wad of paper, a bead, or something slightly more alive that's in your ear. According to these studies, a number of pediatric hospitals, emergency care centers, and ear and eye infirmaries across the US and in other countries deal with over 100 foreign body obstructions a year. And about 10% of those are insects and the most common insect they're finding are cockroaches. But this also may be more likely to happen in certain geographical regions. One particular study that took place in Southern California over the course of a year saw 98 foreign body obstructions. Of those, 45 were insects, 43 of them were cockroaches, one moth, and one case of insect larvae. But it's important to remember that if this does happen to you, while it's definitely terrifying and emotionally traumatizing, it poses very little actual danger. So I went to an ENT later that day and in one fell swoop, he used a huge pair of tapered scissors and he extracted just one piece and it was the roach's head, arms, upper torso, and it's completely intact, two inch long antennae. And then the doctor comes with this like tube and he sucks and he goes, oh, we're gonna need more suction. And he like cranks the thing up and pulls out this ginormous bug. And he said, do you wanna keep it? And I said, no, thank you, I'm out of here. And that was that. And I hope I never experienced that again. 